see. Spawn of the sub. Beautiful takeoff. Yes, good pilot. But why did you charter such a large plane for just the two of us, Michael? Isn't this being just a bit too pretentious? <laughs> uh, nothing but the best from now on, Adela. Besides, this was the only plane available. You can unloosen your safety belt now. I might as well confess that the real reason I was late was because I took so much time reading the notices in the paper this morning. Oh, weren't they superb? Excellent. The audience was quite nice to me last night. Extremely appreciative, but well, I didn't expect such fine reports from the press. Didn't I tell you before the concert that you'd be a hit? Today, my dear, you're recognized as the outstanding soprano of the nation. You've had a lot of faith in me, haven't you, Michael? Well, offhand, I'd say I have, yes. You spent a lot of money to make me a success. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll collect every cent of it back if we get as good houses as we had last night. Michael. Yes, darling? Do you feel, well, rather strange? Strange? No, dear, why? I... I feel like something is going to happen. <laughs> what makes you say that? I don't know. A feeling of impending danger just seemed to come over me all of a sudden. Danger? What possible danger could we be in? I don't know. But I've had this feeling before. It's like... Like someone had spread a shroud down over this airplane. Oh, now that's a peculiar way to talk, Adela. It's the same sort of feeling I had that day Stefan disappeared. Stefan Wilder? Yes. Adela. I was riding in my car that day. I'd been to a matinee with several of my friends. We'd had a glorious time. I was quite happy. So I drove out into the country with the top down on my car. The wind was blowing against the car, just as it's blowing against the plane now. And the sun was glistening on the bright metal of the car, just as it's glistening on the wing out there. Darling, please don't think of that now. Oh, it was a lovely day, just like today. My heart was very light. I was happy, thrillingly happy. Stefan and I were to be married within a week. Adela, please. And then, for no reason at all, I had that strange feeling. It just came out of nowhere and settled down around me like a a huge cloth might cover the body of someone who had just died. Don't talk that way, darling. It was the strangest feeling I'd ever experienced. Weird. Terrible. It gave me the feeling that... A hundred thousand evil spirits were racing at a maddening pace behind my car, trying to catch up with me, clutch me in their bony, fiendish hands. That was so long ago. Five years. So long ago. Seems like yesterday. Then, when I speeded up the car, something began to pound in my ears. It's pounding there now, Michael. It's pounding there now. Adela, please. The faster I drove, the more that evil shroud hung over me. I gave the car more gas. More, more, more. And then... When they found you in the wreckage, they thought you were dead. I couldn't make the curve. The motor had reached full speed. I could think of but one single danger the invisible danger that raced there behind me, striving to catch me in its hold. But there was no one, nothing. Oh, but there seemed to be. And what was so strange, all of a sudden that bright day vanished. Just vanished. Clouds came out of nowhere and hid the sun from sight. Darling, I... I'd better pull down the shade on the window. Oh, Michael, wait a minute. Look. Look outside. Clouds. We're flying below them. And they've completely blotted out the sun. The sun will be out in a minute. Oh, 
It's just like that day. Clouds hiding the sun. Just like they did that day. Oh, just a coincidence. Dark, dreary clouds. Followed by loud bursts of thunder. Listen. Oh, my God. What does it mean? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just a thunderstorm. Pilot will go up and fly above it. Why didn't he go up above the storm when he saw it? Oh, I don't know. Because he didn't see it, that's why. Certainly he did. No. No, it came up. Just like that day five years ago. Out of nowhere. It came up before the pilot was even aware of it. Oh, nonsense. It wasn't nonsense five years ago. First the clouds, then the thunder, then it began to rain. Well, look for yourself. It's not raining now. It's nothing but an electrical storm. See, we're going above it. Oh, Michael, I'm frightened. There's nothing to be frightened about. There, look. There's the sun again. It was all so strange. That feeling. The clouds hiding behind the sun. The thunder. Sure, but no rain. Mr. Brock. Oh, Michael. Tony, oh, just the pilot talking to us over the talkback system. Uh, push that button right there so I can answer him. Mr. Brock, Miss Rhodes. Yes, pilot, what is it? Uh, don't be alarmed about the storm. We're above it now. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, just an electrical storm, isn't it? No, sir. It's more than that. It's raining cats and dogs down there. My God. Rain. Oh, my God. But we're up above the storm. Nothing can harm us here. You remember, don't you? I never saw Stephen Wilder again after that experience I had five years ago. Yes. As I remember. No one ever saw him again. He just disappeared. Please, darling, don't think about it anymore today. You're tired. Perhaps a little rest would do you good. Oh, yes, you're right. I am tired. Just lie back and relax, then. Honestly, sweet, there's nothing to be worried about. We just happened to run into a storm when you thought about that old experience of yours. I wonder, Michael. I wonder if we did just happen into the storm. You, darling? Over here, dear. Did you have a good sleep? Oh, I did sleep after all. Why are the lights out? Oh, I turned them out so you'd sleep as long as you could. And I'll switch them back on. There. What time is it? Uh, 9.30. 9.30? Oh, Michael, I've been asleep more than eight hours. <laughs> I thought you'd never wake up. It's after dark, and you've had the lights off all this time just for me. Well, I guess I'd better admit I got a little sleep, too. Where are we now? Over Mexico. Hey, hungry, dear? Oh, I'm famished. You know, I can't imagine what made me sleep so long. Oh, we landed Centella. We can get food there. Have we landed at all since I retired? No, we're circling now. Well, that's Centella down there. Oh. They better pretty up a bit. This is a secluded part of the country, but you never know who you're going to run into. Centella. How long before we're in Monterey? Oh, about an hour. Did you get good reservations? The best. Did you enjoy your dinner? Oh, immensely. That was a nice place. Certainly a rough landing field, though. Well, it's not actually a landing field. We had to land someplace to refuel before we got to Monterey, so I picked Centella. I enjoyed it. A quaint little place. Hmm. It's a funny thing, Michael. Did you notice the plane? What do you mean, dear? didn't look a bit like it had been in a rainstorm. I thought you'd forgotten all about that. Of course, it didn't look like it. We flew above the rain before it started. Oh, yes, that's right. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to spend the next hour looking through my fashion magazines before we land at Monterey. Yes? 
Should we be over water? Water? Well, no, of course not. Well, we are. There's water all around us. Well, let's see. Why, heaven, Adela, you're right. The pilot's off his course. Well, surely you must realize it. Oh, you better go up and find out. Yes, I will. I'll be right back. Have, hurry, Marco, for heaven's sake. Right. Oh, door to the pilot's cabin's locked. I say, pilot. Pilot. What's wrong, Marco? Oh, the door to this cabin is locked. Curtain over the windows pulled down inside. Pilot, open up. Look, he's raising the curtain. Michael. Good Lord. A thick, hairy arm. Michael. That's not our pilot at the controls. It's a monkey. A gorilla. Oh, Michael. Are we dreaming? No. No, it's true. A live gorilla piloting our plane. But that's impossible. No, confound the door's locked. Open this door. Open up. Oh, Michael, be careful. Look at him. Peering back at us with little beady eyes and an expression on his face that almost human. This is fantastic. How in the world did we ever come to be in the air with a creature like that? We had our regular pilot when we landed at Centella. I saw him climb down out of the cabin. So did I. But I never did see him again before we took off. Naturally, his back was to me when I gave him the go ahead signal. Oh, Michael. Michael, now what? Oh, we're over land. Bringing the plane down. Oh, my God. We're on the ground. An absolutely perfect landing. He's unlocking the door now. Michael, what's he going to do? Just take it easy. Don't get excited. Whatever you do, don't run or make a fast movement. Don't let him know you're afraid of him. Just standing there. Looking at us. Whatever you do, don't let him know you're afraid of him. You don't have to be afraid of me. Michael. That that creature talked. Of course I talk. (laughs) Oh, we're a couple of fools, Adela. Just our pilot playing a trick on us, dressed up in a monkey suit. There is no trickery. I am not your original pilot. What? I joined you at Centella, where I came to meet you for Dr. Luther. Doctor? Dr. Luther? Yes. He's waiting for you. Now come, follow me. Steady, darling. Come on. We'd better follow him. Here's the doctor now. Well, Stephen, I see you brought our visitors. Yes, doctor. Yes, just as I directed you. Welcome, Adela Rhodes, and welcome to your lovely, lovely voice. I say, look here. And welcome to you, Mr. Brock. I'm so sorry that you will be of no assistance to me. However, you may be interested in what I have planned. Now listen, Dr. Luther. I want to know what this is all about. You will learn what it is all about. And without delay, I assure you. Come, Stefan. Don't be so inhospitable. Show our guest into the laboratory. down over there, my dear. Over here, Mr. Brock. Michael. Dr. Luther, I demand an explanation. Where are we? Why have you brought us here? You're too full of questions, Mr. Brock. I've already told you I'm about to show you why I brought you here. Here, high in these mountains, secretly, I've been working for five years, experimenting, testing, trying to accomplish what everyone would have said was utterly impossible had I told them about it. But I didn't tell anyone. Instead, I came here and built this laboratory. You see, it's fully equipped and modern in every detail. Oh, look here, Dr. Luther. During those five years, I trained Stephen here. I believe you will agree my training has been very successful. You now see an almost full-grown gorilla behaving like a human, acting like a human, even talking like a human. I've been very kind to you, haven't I, Stephen? Yes, Dr. Luther. Of course you've been kind. Yes, just so. (laughs) Scientists back there in your world, my dear Miss Rhodes, will tell you it's impossible to completely train a gorilla. That is the second point in which I've proved them wrong. Stephen, sing for us. Yes, Doctor. Mm -hmm. 
Si può, si può, signore, signori. Doesn't he have an excellent voice? Michael, did you hear that? Impossible. Sing again, Stephen. Oh, oh. Soon he will be world famous. I shall travel with him, take him to the four corners of the earth, and show people how well my gorilla sings. Oh, Michael. I can't believe it. That's Stephen Wilder's voice. It can't be. Ah, but it is. Yes. Now I remember. Now I know who you are, Dr. Luke. Stephen Wilder had an appointment with you that day he disappeared five years ago. I'd forgotten all about it, but I just now remembered. So that's what happened to Stephen Wilder. You kidnapped him and brought him here and... You. Precisely. <laughs> I brought him here to do what others said could never be done. And I chloroformed him five years ago and brought him here... I thought I was ready, but my gorilla wasn't, so I had to wait. Three months ago, I performed the operation. Operation? I removed the vocal cords from the man and grafted them into the gorilla. Oh. This is ridiculous. A thing like that can't be done. Oh, surely you don't deny the proof I've just given you, Mr. Brock. Stephen, sing. Oh. Recognized that voice, Miss Rhodes, the moment you heard it, because you'd sung operas with Mr. Wilder so much. That was the way he sang, to exercise his voice. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you both realize what I have here? The secret of an untold wealth. Why, besides knowing how to train this ferocious and morose type of animal, besides knowing how to transfer human vocal cords successfully... I have something I can exhibit to the world to prove my knowledge. Think. Think of the fortune I can amass because people will pay immense sums to see and hear my singing gorilla. Oh, stop it. Stop it, I say. Why have you brought me here? Surely you could have spared me this. I will tell you why, Miss Rhodes. If you and Mr. Brock will step over here... The only place we're going to step is out of this place. You will do as I ask. Stephen, these people are not to leave. Very well, Dr. Luther. Over here, if you please. Better do what he says, Anna. There. Go to this plate glass. Look into the next room. Another gorilla. Yes. Isn't it a fine specimen? Fine specimen? Yes, she. She? I uh, No. You're not trying. I've trained her very carefully. She was so much more responsive than the male. Now that she's able to obey me, I'm quite ready for the rest of my plans for her. Oh, no. No, you can't. I, I won't let you. I'll say you can. Neither of you will be able to prevent it. And soon, soon I'll tour the world with the most amazing exhibition on Earth. A male and a female gorilla... Singing all the world's famous operas. Look here, you... Wait a minute. I just happened to think of something, Doctor. Yes? Do you remember the day Stephen Wilder had that appointment with you five years ago? Yes. Certainly I remember. I'd been planning to obtain possession of him so I could bring him here. I was most pleased when he called and asked for an appointment. But did he tell you why he was calling upon you? I know. No, he didn't. He came to you, Dr. Luther, because he was losing his voice. You... You must be wrong. I am not wrong. I am the only one he told about it. It had been worrying him for a long time. You see, the more he sang, the worse his voice became. He was gradually losing it. But... That's impossible. Do you think so, Doctor? 
You're a specialist on that subject. That's why he was coming to you that no. day. No. You must be wrong. After all the work I've done. Your gorilla will lose his voice, Dr. Luther. And I assure you, before you'll do anything to me, I'll see to it that my voice is ruined too. He won't. He can't. He's an excellent voice. Excellent. Yes, yes, of course he is. We've worked together. I've trained him. His voice can't go bad on me now. Not now. Just when it's finally successful. Oh, you'll see, Dr. Luther. No, you're wrong. You're mistaken. He'll sing all right. He won't lose his voice. Will you step in? No, of course not. You're in an excellent voice, Stephen. Sing. Sing your head, Stephen. Show him. Sipo, Sipo, Signore, Signore. There, you see? Did you hear that? A beautiful quality, beautiful tones. Oh, Marie. Listen, Doctor. Devin! What's wrong? Try again. Oh, my! Now you think I'm wrong. So it is true. Devin, you, you devil. After all I've done, after all my work, this is what I get as a reward. I've sacrificed everything. My position, my career, all my money. And this is what happens. Well, there's one way, Stephen. Thy heaven has one way. Get back, Adela. He got a gun. No, no, Dr. Luther. Oh. That would have hit that beast, but look at him. Stop! No, no, stop it! Stop it, no, no! You have heard Spawn of the Subhuman, tonight's original tale of Dark Fantasy by Scott Bishop. Ben Morris was heard as Michael Brock, Eleanor Naylor Corrin was Adler Rhodes, Garland Moss played Dr. Luther, and Muir Height was the gorilla. Next Friday night at this same time, listen to the 16th in this series of dark fantasy dramas created by Scott Bishop, The Man with the Scarlet Satchel. The story of an aged millionaire who receives a child set of modeling clay as a practical joke, but who turns the gift into an incredible and weird instrument of destruction. Don't miss this unusual story next Friday night, The Man with the Scarlet Satchel. Tom Paxton speaking. Dark Fantasy comes to you from WKY, Oklahoma City. This is the National Broadcasting Company.